Hi there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to conduct a chi-squared goodness of fit test using SPSS. And in this particular video, we're going to see how to conduct such a test when we are assuming equal probabilities. And this example will demonstrate what I mean. So in this uh, frequency table down here, all right, we have the results of 60 rolls of a single die. And so there's six options, one to six, and here's the frequency, this, this middle column, those are the frequencies um, with which these outcomes occurred, right? And if it was a perfectly fair die, we would expect these outcomes to have the same frequencies, or at least close, right? And so what we're assuming in this case is that the probability of each outcome, this right, far right column, those probabilities are all the same. And that's what I mean by we're going to assume equal probabilities and see if this distribution in the middle matches a distribution associated with equal probabilities. Right? So we're really testing, it. is this die fair? Do we believe this die to be fair or not? And there's actually two parts to this video. In the first case, we're going to see, uh, we're going to enter the data just in the terms of this um, frequency table here, right? And that's not standard um, data format for SPSS. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that with the standard format. And what I mean by the standard format is that each row represents a case. So if there's 60 rows, there's actually 60 cases. So you'd actually have 60 rows, and then the variable would be outcome, you know, what, what was showing on the die when it was rolled, all right? So let's do this in SPSS. So we'll first do it with the frequency table, right? And so in this case, my data looks um, quite simple. It's very small. Um, I have the outcomes, which is one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's what's showing on the face of the die. And then the count, that's the frequency with which each, out, with which, um, each outcome occurs. <laughs> Trying to get that together. Um, okay, so before I even get started, I do want to get to my variable view and make sure these um, variables, outcome and count, are defined properly. Um, so outcome, those are the, what's showing on the face of a die. So if you look at that, I'm counting that as a string because it looks like a number, and it really is, but it could also be heads or tails or a color on a spinner or something. So I'm not really using the numerical properties of this outcome. So I'd save it as a string. Uh, you could also use it as numeric, but then my graphs have um, numerical values where the outcome 1 is written 1.000, so it looks a little strange. So I'm going to have as a string, and that immediately makes my only measurement scale nominal, right? And then my count, that actually is numeric, right? That's how many times each outcome occurred. And so I give that a measure of scale. Or no will work as well. And I'm not doing any decimal places for, for either one of these. We're going to zero decimal places. All right. So because this data is not in standard format, I have to do a little trick. I have to weight these outcomes with the frequency with which they occurred, right? So I have to weight this outcome of the number one seven times. So it's really easy to do. I go up to data. I go down to weight cases. And count, those are going to be my weights, right? So I'm going to weight cases by, I like count and click that arrow. Now I have my variable, right? Now I can use this as a frequency table um, as I would like to. By the way, the um, statistics viewer just tells me that I, I weighted by count. OK. All right, so now I haven't actually done the uh, goodness of fit test, the chi-squared test yet. So now I'm going to start that. I go to Analyze, and I'm going to go down to Non-Parametric Tests. Now if you go to Legacy Dialogs, and in different versions this Legacy Dialog isn't even there, it's just these options. There's a chi-squared test. I am not going to use that one. That one is not as flexible as what I'm about to do. All right? So instead of that, I'm going to one sample, because this is one sample. I rolled a die 60 times, and that's my sample, right? So one sample, it is not a, um, I mean, sometimes you get lucky with SPSS, and it actually does exactly what you want. I, I don't trust uh, my luck that much. So 
I'm going to go down to a customized analysis, right? And I'm going to work along the top of this um, dialog box. I'm going to go to fields. So I'm going to be testing is outcome. Now it could be when it starts off, they both might be over here, outcome or town. But I'm going to I'm testing test fields outcome, the frequency of these outcomes, the distribution of these outcomes, right? Then I go to settings, and I'm not going to have SPSS automatically choose the test. It is surprising how often it chooses the right test, um, and I have no idea how it does that, um, but I'd rather just tell it to do. So I'm going to customize my test. This is a chi-squared test, right? We're comparing observed probabilities to hypothesized probabilities, or observed frequency of outcomes with respect to an expected distribution. Um, so that's what I'm going to choose. I choose options, and my options are either I get to customize my expected probability, in which case I would put in my outcomes of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the, and the probabilities assumed in the null hypothesis. But since they're all equal, there's a single button for that. All categories have equal probabilities. I click OK. I'm ready to run it. When I click Run, it shows up here. And the output into the statistics viewer, all it really does is tell me a little bit about the test. The null hypothesis is that the outcomes occur with equal probabilities. It is a one sample chi squared. It's significance, that's the significance of the test statistics. Test statistic. In other words, that is the p value. So the p value is 0.269. And if you go back to the book, that's the p value we got when we calculated all that stuff by hand. All right, we built the big table to come up with the test statistic. But notice, it doesn't give us the test statistic. And now I don't know why, but when you use that method I showed you, when you use the analyze um, one sample as opposed to the chi-square, it gives me this output. But if you hover over it, look, you can double-click to activate. And you get some more goodies there. So I'm going to double-click. And what that produces is a little bit more information. There's my test statistic, 6.4. And that's what we got when we calculated it by hand. And there again is the p-value, 0.269. So we already had that in our last output. But it also gives us a nice um, frequency table of observed frequencies versus the hypothesized. Notice the hypothesized are all the same height because they're equal um, probabilities. Uh, the problem with this graph is it doesn't start at zero, so it tends to um, distort the differences between hypothesized and observed. Um, and the differences look pretty huge in this graph, but obviously they're not that huge, or my p-value would have been smaller. Right? Because so I've got a pretty big p-value. That means I failed to reject my null hypothesis. And what we're saying is that this distribution of outcomes um, is not far away enough from what I expected from a fair die to conclude that the die is um, not fair. Right? Um, so I'm real quick going to show you how to do this whenever I don't have the data in terms of a frequency table. It's actually easier. So this is sort of the standard format for data in SPSS. Each row is a case and each column is a variable. So I'm going to go back to here. Let me get rid of this graph. And this is my frequency table version. I also have a um, standard format version. So that looks like this. So my, the roll number, you know, I've, I've rolled this thing, um, what was it, 60 times. So I have 60 of these. And then my outcomes is what's showing on the die. And these outcomes fit the same frequency table from the prior version of this. When you go to variable view, my roll number, that's actually which roll it is. I'll save that as numeric. But my outcome is a string. That's the one, two, three, four. They look like numbers, but they're actually just names for the, for the face of the die. Um, and so it gets the nominal standard, actually the nominal measurement. Um, and if you change this to numeric, you could do that, as long as you keep nominal for the type of measure. But I'm going to go with string, because that represents um, qualitative data. Okay, so this is actually really easy. I don't have to weight the outcomes because it's actually just a giant list, all the data, all the list of outcomes. It's going to count up all the different outcomes for me. So again, I go to Analyze, 
Same non-parametric tests, one sample. Again, I'm not going to chi-square. I'm going to one sample. I'm going to do a customized analysis. My fields, now what am I doing? Am I, am I testing the, the distribution of roll numbers? No. That's just indicating what number, what role it was. We're testing the distribution of outcomes, right? These numbers over here. Okay, good. And then settings, customize test. We're going to go to chi-squared, options. And again, we're going with all categories have equal probability. So I follow the exact same steps. I just didn't um, weight my frequency table or my outcomes. And I run it. And if you notice, we get the exact same output here. And if we double click it, we will also get a graph and some additional information, test statistic, and p-value. So nothing changes. It's actually easier when the data is in standard format. The problem is that when you're sort of learning this stuff, it usually shows up in terms of a um, frequency table. And so you can force SPSS to recognize that frequency table, but you have to weight the outcomes with the frequencies. All right, and that's how you do a goodness of fit test with equal probabilities. The next video will be a goodness of fit test where the probabilities have some predetermined values. But that's in another video. Um, have a good day. Bye.